Today's video is brought to us by Nizen. More on them later in the video. I'm sharing four knockout vegetarian dinners that your family is going to love in today's video. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. Today I have a vegetarian themed what's for dinner for you and these recipes I'm not going to downplay them. They are so good, okay? All four of them are really delicious and I can't wait to share them with you. I will have the printable recipes in my corresponding blog post linked down below. Today we are making a vegetarian pad thai, a vegetable cheese quiche, a slow cooker vegetarian coconut curry with tofu, and a very easy vegetable barley soup. So let's begin. All right, let's start off with the vegetarian pad thai. Now this recipe will use fish sauce and egg, so if you don't use those things, um, you could substitute vegan fish sauce or maybe tofu for the egg. So uh, just substitute as you need for your own dietary needs. We're gonna start by sauteing some vegetables in my Misen nonstick pan. Now remember, Misen brought us this video. This is their nonstick pan, I absolutely love it. I'll tell you more about it later, but let's get back to the recipe. Okay, so you can use whatever vegetables you like, and today I'm using carrots, red peppers, and zucchini. To this, I'm adding some chopped onion. I'm gonna saute these for a few minutes, but not too long. You don't want the vegetables to be too soft. Meanwhile, I'm going to boil these brown rice pad thai noodles according to the package directions. Now I'm going to assemble the sauce. I'm combining fish sauce, vegetable broth, brown sugar, apple cider vinegar, soy sauce and I'm whisking that together. Once the vegetables are sauteed, I remove them from the mise en pan and I set them aside. Meanwhile, I've drained the cooked pad thai noodles. I'm adding those noodles to the pan along with the sauce and cooking that for a few minutes. Then I push the noodles to the side and I add some of the scrambled egg and I let that cook for a minute or two before mixing it in together with the noodles. Then I add the vegetables back into the pan. So when you plate this, top the pad thai with chopped cilantro and chopped onions. You know that I love to add both of those in excess. And then squeeze lime juice all over. with peanuts. This dish is so good. I've modified this recipe over the years and I feel like this is the best incarnation of it. You could add other things like bean sprouts or tofu, whatever you want really. You could add eggplant. Ginger would be a good addition here. There's a lot of ways to enjoy this dish, but basically this is the main foundation of it. There's a lot of different ways that you can enjoy this dish. Okay, 
Okay, now let's do the vegetable and cheese quiche. So I'm going to share a very easy homemade quiche dough recipe for you. It only uses four ingredients and it's fail proof. So you're going to mix together one cup of flour and a half a teaspoon of salt. Then you're going to whisk together a half cup of olive oil and cold water and add that to the flour mixture until it's all combined. Then you press this into your pie pan. So I know you might be thinking this looks bad, but I just call it rustic. <laughs> That's it. So just set it aside and now we're going to get our vegetables sauteed. I'm adding some olive oil to my mise en nonstick pan. And I'm using my friend Maura Graber's olive oil here. Graber olives, best olives, best olive oil, love them. So I'm sauteing some chopped green pepper, chopped onion, and some basil. I also add some sliced mushrooms. So you're going to cook this until the vegetables are brown and slightly softened. Now, in the bottom of the pie crust, I'm placing some shredded mozzarella cheese, but you can use whatever kind of cheese you like. And then I'm adding the sauteed vegetables on top. Now I'm whisking three eggs with a half a cup of heavy cream, salt and pepper, and some chopped parsley from the garden, and I'm setting that aside. Back to the quiche. I'm adding some sliced tomato on top. then pouring the egg mixture all over it and topping it with more cheese. I bake this in the oven until it's nice and brown and the egg is all set and the pie crust is cooked and that's at around 40 minutes. This was so good. Ben called this a 10 out of 10. I love quiches. I love eating them for breakfast the next day. And this one is really delicious. Again, you could substitute whatever vegetables you want for this, but it's really that ratio of cheese, veggies, and then the egg and cream mixture with that homemade crust. It's so good. I'm going to break away for one minute to tell you about Misen, who have kindly sponsored today's video. Misen create high quality cooking products and I'm sharing their non-stick pan with you today. So you saw me use it in the previous two recipes. Misen pans are perfect for searing, sauteing, and cooking delicate foods like eggs and fish. Most non-stick pans are either cheap and they lose their coating quickly, or they cost over $100 and they still only last a few years before they start sticking. But Misen created something different, the Misen non-stick system. They combine the highest quality and safest non-stick surface with a unique plasma primer that helps the non-stick perform better than pans that cost over $130 at a fraction of the price. Additional features include their PFOA free unique surface plasma primer, and stay cool handle. Misen's nonstick pan is already half the cost of other premium cookware, and now they're giving you an extra 20% off site-wise, plus free shipping on orders of $75 or more if you use my code Jennifer. So click my link below and try it out. Sear, saute, and put it to the test. If you still don't like it, you can return it on their dime. Thank you so much to Misen for sponsoring today's video. 
Okay, now back to the recipes. Now I'm going to share with you the slow cooker vegetarian coconut curry. So I start off by placing my prepared vegetables into the slow cooker. And today I'm using potatoes, chopped green pepper, red pepper, carrots, and onion. On top of that, I'm placing some flour and curry powder and I'm mixing this until the vegetables are coated. The flour is going to thicken it up a little bit. Now I'm adding a packet of Lipton onion soup mix. And then I mix in a can of coconut cream. I add half a can of water and I mix everything together. and I cook this on high for three hours. Then at this point after the three hours, I add some chopped extra firm tofu and I continue to cook another half hour at least on high. I serve the curry over cooked cilantro rice and I top it with more chopped cilantro. And this one is really delicious. It's a very delicate, mild coconut flavor. You could definitely add spices to this if you want to make it spicy, um, but this is really good over rice. It's a very comforting curry. Final recipe, we're making a very easy vegetable barley soup. So you're going to see what I mean by it's time to retire my stock pot here. This is not a mise en pot, okay? This is my ancient stock pot, okay? So forgive me. So I add some vegetable broth to this stock pot along with diced tomatoes and some drained garbanzo beans. To this, I'm going to add one cup of barley that has been rinsed and drained. Now I'm adding zucchini, carrot, celery, and onion. I also add paprika, salt, pepper, and some garlic powder. Now I'm adding some fresh herbs from the garden, including thyme, oregano, and Italian parsley, but you could use whatever herbs you have on hand. I also add a dash of Worcestershire sauce for a really bold flavor. I love this flavor in a vegetable soup. And finally, I'm adding three bay leaves from our tree. So we'll take those out later, don't forget. So you let this cook for about 35 to 40 minutes or until the barley is cooked and the carrots are soft. But you need to watch this. Don't leave it and go away because the liquid really cooks down and I ended up adding an entire other carton of vegetable stock to this. So I had to replenish that so it wouldn't dry out. But this is really delicious. It's that tomato, Worcestershire, barley flavor. It's really good. It's like an umami soup. So I just served this with sandwich toast <laughs> because this was a busy night, but it was so good. I could imagine that this would be really good with homemade bread, for example. But this is a nice, delicious winter soup. It was the perfect uh, meal. enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much to Misen for bringing it to us. Don't forget to use my link and code down below for 20% off plus free shipping on orders over $75. If you enjoyed this vegetarian version and you would like to see more, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section. Keep calm and remain classy everyone and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!